Aloha. Welcome to the majestic Hawaiian Islands. Are you ready for some volleyball? This could be a was one year ago the third national championship for Brian Gimolero. This year he's back and going for number four. Standing in his way, however, a man who's already won four, Big Daddy Don Shaw. Stanford bidding to become the team of the decade. Their drive for five continues next as the Cardinal tries to officially close the beach. We're at the Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii for the 1999 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. This is national semifinal number two between the Stanford Cardinal and the Long Beach State 49ers. Penn State has defeated Pacific. They'll be in the final against either the 49ers or the Cardinal. Hi again, everybody, and welcome along with Heather Cox. I'm Chris Marlowe, Long Beach State, the undefeated champion a year ago. This year, 31-2, and two, and yet nobody is giving Long Beach much of a chance in this semifinal. Why not? Well, it's amazing to think, but this Long Beach team lost three, year, three starters from last year's team. That equates to nearly 12 years of experience. They also are without two-time National Player of the Year, Misty May, and they've got a very young setter. But this Long Beach team is extremely physical, very athletic. And that starts with middle blocker Cheryl Weaver. She's a first-year starter and was just named first-team All-American. What an amazing impact she has made in her first year in the lineup. She's turning into a dynamo, has one of the quickest first steps. It's one of the most physical players we've seen in a long time. Looks a lot like Danielle Scott, who used to play for the Niners. And she has developed for into an all-around player. Look to see her in the national team in the future. Stanford with four NCAA titles in the 90s. This year, Don Shaw's crew is 30 and 2. Is there a weakness in this team that the 49ers could exploit? Well, what I always say about Stanford is they don't have a rebuilding year. They just have a reloading year. But if there is a weakness, it's their two young outside hitters. They're both freshmen who must play big. The player that everybody expects to play big is the senior, Kerry Walsh, the second ever four-time first-team All-American. She's been through two shoulder surgeries, has not been 100%, but she said, I'm going to let it all go this weekend. Look for her to be an impact and a huge player tonight. It is one of the great rivalries in women's collegiate volleyball, the Stanford Cardinal and the... Back in Honolulu, Hawaii, getting set for semifinal number two, Long Beach State and Stanford quickly to the starting lineups. Long Beach State, Veronica Walls opposite, Grabovats and Bear outside, Hanif and Weaver in the middle, Kerry Nishimoto is the setter. Brian Gimilaro is in his 15th year, three NCAA titles to his credit. For the Stanford Cardinal, Kerry Walsh is opposite. Yamasaki and Tom are the outside hitters. Conrad and Detmer in the middle, and Lindsey Kagawa is the setter. Don Shaw, four NCAA titles. His 86.5% winning percentage is the best in NCAA history. This will be the best three out of five game match, each game to 15 points. You must win by two. You can only score when you serve, and you cannot touch the net at any time. And already you're getting a quick look at Brandi Barrett, who has just moved to the outside from the middle. I think she is the X factor in this match. She must have a big match pass well for Long Beach. Kagawa sets it into the middle, and the ball spiked out of bounds by Conrad. Most observers seem to think if Long Beach State does have a chance in this match, they must win game one. They need a quick start. Stanford also is a slow starting team, so Long Beach must capitalize early. Ball is blocked, Weaver stuffing it down. Cheryl Weaver, she's a 6'2 sophomore from Washington, D.C. She had an outstanding season, as we'll detail throughout this match. Two to nothing, Long Beach. Long Beach a very fast team, a very quick team. They like to get off to a quick start. Nobody warms up like the beach. I was exhausted watching them. Out of the back line, that was Kirolf. Conrad Kip, nicely done. Tara Conrad, a sophomore from Torrance, California. She's 6'3". And that middle blocker position for Stanford is really a triple-headed monster between Detmer, Conrad, and Sandrick. They're all interchangeable. Lindsay Kagawa set to serve. Pass is coming over the net. That's two hits as Walsh 
juked it into the net. Back set, Nishimoto. And over the top, the ball is out. An interesting matchup, and look, for both setters on this squad, both of them rather small, both under about 5'9", both of them vulnerabilities blocking for these teams. The setters will want to try and set over the shorter right side block. That's going to be another point. This is considered Stanford's best rotation with Conrad, Tom, and Walsh up front. One of the best blocking lines in college volleyball, if not the best. And the key to utilize this rotation is that Kagawa gets her serves in. Bad pass. Set high left. Here comes Grabovats. Dug up. Nicely done. Here comes Stanford left side. First shot from Logan Tom. As good as advertised. She's a freshman from Salt Lake City. He can do everything. And I talked about the pressure for the freshman. The key is, will Tom play like a freshman or like the international superstar that she is? Third serve, three points in a row. Back set. And Weaver pumps it through. Cheryl Weaver with 506 kills this year. She hit 400. Last year, she had 39 kills in 18 games. Barely played behind Benicia Dealer. She will serve. 3-2 Stanford, good pass there. Here comes Walsh, and Walsh right over the top of Nishimoto. A perfect turn that time because she's got Taiba Hanif at six foot six blocking middle, and then she's got the five foot seven Nishimoto, Nishimoto blocking right. Hanif in the middle front now. Tom with the serve, bad pass. Long Beach struggling. They can't get the pass up there. They can't get the ball to their middle hitter. Around the side, and there goes Conrad. Nice transition volleyball that time by Stanford and Chris. That is the weakness of this Brian Gimilaro squad is can they pass the ball? If they can, one of the most potent offenses in the country. They want to attack number 12, Brandy Barrett. There she is. Nice play by Nishimoto. As Nishimoto stuffs it, Nishimoto's in the front line. So she's able to do that. Now she goes back to serve, and checking in is Veronica Walls, number four. And you can see that Nishimoto is heavily taped right around the hip flexor. Injured that in practice. It's about a month-long injury that she re-aggravated Wednesday in practice. Hampered her quite a bit in practice. Keeping that wrap on keeps it warm, keeps it tight. Hip flexor certainly affected when you plant and, and push off on one foot. Jump serve coming from Conrad. And that's a little bit too long. Long Beach will have it back. Long Beach, 31 and three this year. A Big West record of 14 and two. Their losses to Hawaii early and twice to Pacific. Ashley Ivy is in. Freshman from Arlington, Texas. Pretty good pass. Back set and Walsh. Now remember, throughout the years, Walsh has had shoulder problems. She told us at the press conference yesterday that her shoulder is feeling great, and she's 100%, at least hitting with no pain. And all season long, she's been monitoring, monitoring it. This year, tonight, she said, I will not monitor it. I'm putting everything on the line I can tonight because I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to wonder what if, if we lose to Long Beach, because she was holding back for a championship night. Ball was shanked over the net, and Long Beach having receiving problems so far. Walsh. Look out, Trumbo. Well, every once in a while, that's going to happen. She hasn't used the jumper in nearly three years. Brought it out last week in the regional finals against Santa Barbara. Had four aces and just shaking things off a little bit. Here's Christy Kirill, number one, a senior from Yorba Linda. Very athletic, good digger, and will hit out of the pipe in transition. Good serve. They're working on Logan Tom. That might be part of their plan to try to wear down the freshman or at least make her concerned about passing. So Certainly far, it so. hasn't worked. Long Beach will put a lot of pressure on both Yamasaki and Tom. Both of them freshman outside hitters carry a lot of load and responsibility for the Cardinals. Yamasaki with a serve. Great set. Ball is dug up as the spike was tapped. Logan Tom, and she is blocked. Nishimoto getting up high along with Cheryl Weaver. Now another substitute coming in is number 20. She'll serve. Weaver in the front line. Melissa Ota, 5'6", junior from Cypress, California. Tremendous defender. So far, Stanford's passing nails. Walsh, give her her third kill. Both of these teams utilize a ton of substitutions. Three more substitutions this year than last. The max is now 15, but look for Brian Gimlero to run out of substitutions, especially in a long game. Here's Jamie Gregory serving. One-time starter for a national championship team. Stanford is so deep that she's now a defensive specialist. Kagawa, Tom, 
Tom is blocked. Kagawa slap shot off the line. Lindsey Kagawa kind of inheriting the setter's position from Robin Lewis this year. Lewis having some injuries, winning the battle, and she's played well all year. Well, and I love the confidence, the feistiness, and the energy that she brings to the court. Back set and Weaver. Pumps it through. So Cheryl Weaver off to a strong start. Start. Weaver with a couple of kills and a couple of blocks. It's six to two, Stanford. Weaver just immediately came in, took that starting position, and just made it hers. Amazing the impact she's had in her first year on the court. Stanford passing, beautiful. Little tip, chance for a point. Nishimoto sets left. Grabovats inside. Tom at the net, trying to slam it down was Kagawa. Blocked. Nice play by Nishimoto. Didn't go, oh, and a lift call by our first referee. That is Erica Sami, the first referee. And Pafal is our umpire. 6-2 Stanford. Game one. Winner plays Penn State. Shank pass. Grabovats tipping. Nice job by Grabovats. Showing a little experience there. Not trying to blast it, just tipping it in and getting the point. She has been a very steady, smart player. In fact, she's had to learn to use those shots. She's been bothered by a very sore shoulder. Did not swing at any balls yesterday in practice. Did not serve as well. Speaking of serving well, that was not it. Cheryl Weaver blasting. Now serving a Logan Tom. Keep in mind that Long Beach State coach Brian Jimalaric does not like to call timeouts. Much like John Wooden in that respect. Into the middle, and the spike by Hanif is out. Tanisha Hanif, the tallest player, well, certainly on the West Coast, the tallest player that Long Beach State has ever had at 6'6". She is becoming an athlete, was very raw when she came into Long Beach. Brian Jimalaro and the squad have done a nice job really training her and turning her into a very agile, quick-footed 6'6". and Tom. A concern for Jim Alero. He says area one. So they're working on Tom. That's who they want to get it to. Perfect pass. Left set. Yamasaki tip. Got it. Yamasaki, who was a standout basketball player a year ago for Tara Vanderbilt's squad as a freshman, led the team in scoring and rebounded. Took that year, took that opportunity to be a red shirt in volleyball. So this is her first year for Don Shaw. You just saw Jen Detmer check in, a dynamic blocker. And there's an ace. So Stanford, very unusual. Stanford, a slow starting team, but the Cardinal roaring out here in game one. We've come to our first timeout. Stanford, eight, Long Beach, two. Coming back for more right after this. The women's volleyball semifinal match between the Stanford Cardinal and the Long Beach State 49ers. We're here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action. Honolulu, Hawaii. Weather perfect today. Semifinal number two, Stanford ahead by four. Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox. Stanford in white. And Long Beach in the dark uniforms. Kerry Walsh blasting away. So is Logan Tom. Walsh with seven. Tom with six. The great one-two punch. Gregory goes out. And Jen Detmer back in the front line. Conrad serving. Into the net. That is going to be legal next year or whatever international volleyball rules take over for NCAA rules. They're already playing that rule. A lot like a let in tennis. It's going to be a tough play. Tough play, especially when it drops over. That's tight. Slap shot and overrunning it. Was Nishimoto. There's something about Walsh. It's almost like she's got that Midas touch. Regardless of the play, no matter how off it is, she's just so fluid and makes things happen. Back set to Walls, and Walls hits the ball into the antenna. And you're right, Heather. She's not into the match yet. She's not loose. She's not smiling. Usually she's got a big grin on her face when she's playing well. And she's playing great. She's been hot the last 12 matches, averaging almost four kills per game. They need to go to her. There she comes, and there it goes. So Veronica Walls with her first kill. She's a 5'10 senior from Austin, Texas. Her claim to fame is she put down the final kill against Penn State in last year's national championship match to go undefeated and win the title. And that was her career high in that match of 19. Into the middle, Yamasaki coming fast. 
Walsh out of the back line, and Walsh puts it away. And there's where you have the advantage. Complete confusion and chaos in the front row. Tom and Detmer not in a position to hit. Kagawa always has that outlet with Walsh in the back row. Brian Gemilera, one of the best and one of the most intense coaches in the country. Slapping it, chasing is Yamasaki, and she can't get there. Walsh also rolling by the bench. Weaver with eight kills and three blocks so far. Her counterpart, Walsh, with nine kills, no blocks. Shank pass. And finally, Long Beach gets an ace. So Veronica Walls gets the beach to seven. And Veronica Walls, not a player that normally stays in the backcourt. Walls. And here comes Tom. Whoa, what a dig. Off Tom. Someone touched the net. Nobody got it. Whip it over to Tom, left side. Ball dug up by Kirolf. And going out of bounds, Kirolf made two marvelous digs. Well, she, in my mind, is one of the best defensive specialists to go through this Long Beach State program. Tremendous athlete. Here comes Jamie Gregory to serve. 11-7. And the errant pass cost Long Beach a point. Certainly, Long Beach does not pass like they did last year. That's an error, and Stanford gets another point. Game one, Stanford leading Long Beach by five. You're looking at beautiful Hanama Bay, where they have the best snorkeling in the world. We want to remind you that the championship match can be seen on ESPN2 on Sunday. The Penn State Nittany Lions taking on the winner of this match. Who was it who went uh, snorkeling in the Nama Bay? Penn State had a chance to do that. Penn State did Relax it on Monday. Relax a little before they'll be playing the championship. Long Beach trailing by five. Beach having trouble passing the ball, and Logan Tom, wow. Does she have some kind of ability? She's listed at 6-1, but the way she gets up, Heather, look Watch, at that. She's up before the attacker is even in position to attack the ball and just hangs and waits and then clamps down. Now Don Shaw and his assistants, Denise Corlett and Josh Cohen, Cindy, Candy Murphy also on the staff, they have assembled quite a group of athletes. And that's what's so impressive. I've had the opportunity to see Stanford play several times this year, and they are so versatile. Any position can play anywhere along the net. They've also got depth due to early injury, early illnesses. So this team peaking at just the right time. Stanford leading the series. Long Beach unsuccessful in championship semifinals. Really the two teams that can lay claim to the team of the decade. Stanford with four titles, Long Beach State with three. And this is certainly a huge grudge match for Brian Gemilaro, who is 0-3 against Don Shaw. Kerry Walsh leading a very potent Stanford attack. Long Beach in trouble. The Beach has had trouble passing the ball. They got behind 8-2. They pulled to within 9-6. But since then, Stanford turning it on again. The and the card now leading 13 to 7. Jamie Gregory continues to serve. Over the top. Gregory got it up. Yamasaki out of the back line. She's not an accomplished back liner yet. Left side. Brandy down the line. So Brandy Barrett. One down the line. How difficult do you think it is making the transition from middle to outside in one year? I think it's extremely difficult, and you have to give a lot of credit to Brandy for being willing to do it. The good news is she knew right at the end of last season, so she trained all spring as an outside hitter. Right here. Left side, here comes Logan Tom, and Logan Tom is just drilling the blocks. Tom with eight kills and a couple of blocks. She is the future of women's volleyball in this country, folks. We've watched her work out. You've seen her play a lot more than I have, but she's she the is. real deal. She is. Oh, yeah, she is. Grabovats. Gregory nearly had that one up. And Long Beach gets the ball back. 
And Grabovac playing with sort of a calmness and maturity that shows in the fact that she's played in three national championship semifinal matches. She knows what it's like to be here. Cheryl Weaver trying to serve tough, serves it out of bounds. That is the fourth service error, but Long Beach unable to put pressure on Stanford. Logan Tom. Right down the middle, pretty good pass. Nishimoto back set and the put away. Nicely done. Kirov staying in the front line now. It's a product of the substitutions running out of those 15 substitutions early. Kirov will come in and play the outside position. She's a high jumper. She competes on the track and field team. So that slide, a very easy transition for off of one leg. Now Grapovac stays in the middle. Can she hit a quick set? Who knows? They'll set back. Here comes Walls. Nice dig in the backcourt. Tom. And the ball stuck in Walsh's hands. You know, Walsh has a nice set of paws. Maybe they should have made her a setter when she was young so you have a, a great, big, tall player to play setter for the national yeah, team one day. Tremendous asset to have a second setter that can set the quicks. Walsh passes the ball and then goes and hits it. And you know, that's that versatility again. Anywhere can hit on any area of the net. And Carrie Walsh actually had to play middle Bacher at points this season because of injury, because of absence. I believe against Texas, she played in that middle position the entire time in their loss. 13 to eight. Long Beach trying to hang in in a game that has been dominated by the Stanford Cardinals. Hero. Also a terrific trackster, high jumper. In 96, finished ninth. Had the ninth best long jump in school history. Grabovat serving. Out of the back line, here comes Tom. And Long Beach can't bring it over. It's going to be four contacts. Four contacts on the 49ers. You know, Chris, I talked to Brian Gimalero about Stanford and their success, and he said, you know what, I think Walsh and Tom are the two best back row attackers in the country. People say it's Lauren Cacciamani out of Penn State. Brian believes truly that it's Walsh and Tom, and we've seen that tonight. Well, he's seen those two players a lot more than he's seen Cacciamani. Cacciamani, certainly brilliant out of the back line. All three, terrific. Back set, here comes Walls. Ball is blocked and down. Detmer backing up, didn't see it. You know what my old coach told me, right, Heather? When the ball comes and lands on your foot, it's yours. It's your ball. Your ball. Jack Hand, <laughs> circa. Reminds so. me a lot of Chrissy Pfeiffer who said, that's not my ball. Bounces off her foot, that's not my ball. <laughs> <laughs> she was a hitter. I know, I remember. <laughs> One of my faves. Hey, how about that? A two-hander. Boy, that's got Brian Jimalaro a little peeved at his defense. And go get that. You know, he prides his team on having a tremendous defensive scrambling ability to see something go on like that. Weaver over the top. Tom goes and gets it. She gets up. Beach with a dig. Barrett. Tom. Whoa! And Grabovac digs Tom. Barrett puts it away. What a rally. Tremendous transition volleyball out of the 49ers. And credit the setter, Carrie Nishimoto, with some incredible digs to keep the rally alive and Barrett finishing it off. Unfortunately, that was just a side out for Long Beach. Wall serving. Trying to work on Yamasaki. Here comes Tom. She taps it. And it goes down. And I was watching Logan Tom the last play when she got the dig. She popped it up. She was up immediately. She doesn't take time to She's get up. She just fires up off her, off her, uh, so her punches. So explosive. Oh. Has so much leg strength. And already Walsh and Tom have combined for 21 of the Cardinals' 30 kills. Jamie Gregory will serve. Tom's at the net. And she stuffs Cheryl Weaver. And she reminds you a little bit of Kristen Fokel. It's because I think she's as good as Kristen Fokel was when she's come in. This could do it for game one. Logan Tom tipped into the net. So Logan Tom is human. She makes a mistake. And Brandy Barrett will have it for the beach. Yamasaki, nice passing. 
And that hit out of bounds. If you were designing the serving for Long Beach, who would you serve of this group? I go after the freshmen. I go after okay. both Yamasaki and Tom. And Tom. Stay okay. away from Jamie Gregory and Kerry Walsh, the two best ball control players on this team. And there's an ace right down the middle. 14 to 10. Long Beach trying to catch up. Or serve it there. You write down the seam, force them to communicate, kind of using a four-person serve receive. That's not the person you want to set. Here comes Tom, oh, man. She hits it over the top. Smart play. Working on the smallest blocker, Kerry Nishimoto. And once again, Stanford moves into its strongest point-scoring rotation. Kagawa goes back to serve. Conrad Walsh and Tom. Anytime Walsh and Tom are together in the front row, it's potent. Game point again for Stanford. Grababots, nice dig, Jamie Gregory. Digging some licks. Tom puts it away. In the 1990s, Stanford is 30 and 0 in NCAA play when it wins game one. So the Stanford Cardinal, a notoriously slow starting team, comes out fired up and wins it 15 to 10. We'll come back, we'll have more of our coverage. Women's volleyball right after this.